Justin, how's the eye today? Great. Yeah, man, way better. Just making forward forward progress. I'm good to go. What exactly was the issue? Was it just an infection? Yeah. Yeah, it was a, but I mean, it ran its course. I mean, I, I'm a week removed right now, so I'm great, man. I've seen every doctor that said you're good to go, and once I hear that, I'm good to go. I imagine once you have a fight booked, you're a hard man to keep from getting in that cage. When do you have something like that? I don't make that decision. Trevor makes that decision, and Trevor always has that on you know, in front of his mind. So once he said I'm good, I'm golden, and I'm going. You said uh, you pretty much went straight from the plane to the Oklahoma workouts yesterday. Was there like a travel delay or something, or what happened there? Yeah. You just got in? Yeah, yeah. Some I don't know. Just flew in a day late. Okay. Does, does that throw off like the fight week routine a little bit? No, my weight's on point. Uh, I'm exactly where I was last five fights, ten fights, so it's perfect. What did uh, Trevor say to you when you brought him the news of the eye infection? Oh, uh, he was good, man. He was good. He said, you know, we're going to work through it. If we can't do it, we can't do it. We can, we can. Doctor said we're good. We're good. You, you and Cowboy are cutting an interesting contrast this week. You were saying that, uh, you know, he's your enemy until the weekend, but he's refusing to go there. He just he really thinks he's really cool, wants to have another beer with your dad. Yeah. Is making the opponent your enemy something you do every fight, or is it just because you kind of... The man across from me is trying to take everything I've worked for for many, many, many years. Um, that's why. I won't let him take it from me. Doesn't matter if he's my friend, my brother. I used to wrestle my twin brother. My mom said, "Don't do this move," and I did it right away. <laughs> you were on the Magic Hour podcast, and you told an interesting story about you were helping someone out, and when the paramedics came, they said, "Oh, do you have a military background?" And because of just the wit, your calm demeanor, is that the same demeanor you have in the cage as well? Yeah, it is. It is. That was a tragic story. That was uh, 13 days before I fought James Vick. I was going to practice. There was a wreck. Uh, it was a car in front of me stopped. Thank God I moved to the side because I wasn't going to stop. And the truck, big truck behind me hit him. The driver of the big truck crushed his chest, and he, he was dead on impact. And I pulled him out, gave him CPR, and then I had to do a bunch of interviews, and then I had to go fight James Vick. So, yeah, that was uh, super mm, tragic. But it's, uh, you know, I've, it's kind of like uh, my, my best friend killed himself when I was a junior in high school. I was the last one to see him. So, I mean, there's things like that where can really prepare you for obstacles in life. And you can't, you can't let things tear you down because, you know, and then it, it just becomes like a, a mudslide. You know, you can't stop the, the negativity. So I just really like to surround myself with positive people, positive thoughts. I listen to reggae because they never boast. They never talk shit about somebody. They never talk about money. All they do is talk about positive attitude and having a relationship with God. And, um, you know, that's a very simple life. You have a good attitude in general. Corey Sanhagen gave you a lot of credit saying you're, you're very in the gym. You give a lot of good advice and things like that. Is that something you're getting used to now, just being sort of a teacher to some of the younger fighters as well? I mean, I think I've always possessed that skill. I, I went to school. I got a human services degree. It was for social work. I mean, that was, you know, and social work is listening. Um, you don't talk. You don't advise. You listen. You listen to people's problems. You don't try to intervene or or steer a conversation. You you're steering a conversation. You're trying to keep a conversation going. But it's really about listening and trying to understand what you're what you're hearing. And so that's a huge part of of this. That's a huge part of helping people. Of of any again, you know, it makes life simple. When you wanted to get into social work, is that something you wanted to be a carer? You wanted to be in therapy? What exactly? I wanted to work with at-risk youth. That was. My main goal, um, my best friend in college was, uh, you know, he came from very opposite circumstances as I did. I have, you know, I'm so blessed with the parents that I was, was blessed with. And he, he came from the opposite, but it just took one or two positive influences in his life to steer him in the right direction. And now he works in the inner city in Denver. Um, most of his kids don't speak English. He's a high school wrestling coach, and he works, he takes his kids to Washington, D.C. on trips. And he's such a good influence and role model to these guys. And, you know, there's no need for him to, you know, there's no reason he should be that, but, but because one or two positive influences in his life. So if I could talk to 100 and affect one, you know, really, uh, I think um, I'm doing what I was set to do with this avenue that I was given. Uh, yes, it's a violent sport. Yes, I'm trying to beat somebody up. But I'm really trying to inspire the youth uh, and inspire people that don't believe in themselves or maybe might be question their work ethic, you know, like, it's, again, keep it simple. Only worry about the things you can control, which is super minimal. You know, like f pick five things that you can't control and then just worry about that. And if something else starts creeping in, then you can literally, you can say, shut up. You can say, shut up internally. You can say whatever you want, but stop that negativity and, you know, move it in the right direction. Do you 
you see yourself in Cowboy is kind of cut from the same cloth? Because he said a lot of similar things when he was in here earlier. As an example, he said, you know, when you have good parents like you do, you usually have a good kid. Uh, he's tried to be inspirational. He's been working with kids lately. Do you kind of see uh, you and him is quite similar? Uh -huh. We're both warriors, so I see that as similarity. Um, I've been, you know, we're acquaintances. I've been around him for a total of maybe, you know, two months in my life. And so it's not like uh, I know the guy personally, like super, I don't know who he is, I don't know how he is, I don't know what he is. I know he's a warrior, I know he's one of the best that's ever done this, and I'm excited to, to face that challenge and face the adversity that he brings. No one's ever put him to sleep, uh, no one's ever put Edson Barboza to sleep, so uh, these are things that I am here for, to create that legacy. Um, I might, you know, obviously I'm 3-2 and two right now, you guys, you could talk all the shit you want about that. I fought the who's who, the toughest guys, um, you know, there's guy. If I get a title shot, it'll only be because I went through the hardest guys. Most guys that get title shots don't have to do that. Are you any more excited fighting Cowboy given the accolades, who he is in the sport, or is this kind of just another fight the way you look at it? I'm super. It's, it's great, man. Like I said, I'm here to create a legacy, and Cowboy is the right man for that right now. He's number four in the world right now. That's not. That's not a mistake. You know, he's uh, he's been around. He's fought the most. He's Finished the most. He's got the most bonuses. So of course, that's what I'm here for. With all of those accolades that uh, Don Cerrone has, would you be happy having his career at the end of the day? Mm, no. No, I'm 20. I have 20 wins and 17 knockouts. That cannot be matched. Justin, he said, and his team is saying that the game plan or the approach to this fight is to fight fire with fire. Is that a mistake going in there against someone like you? I think it's the mindset that you have to come in with. Um, you know, what else is there? You can't stop it, so you have to match it. Your gym does a lot of cross-training with elevation. How much of a benefit has that been, getting to work with those other guys over there? That's my team. That's where I train at. Um, I have a private gym where I do my boxing and wrestling with my coaches, but that's the team I work out with when I do team workouts. I spar with them twice a week. I wrestle with them. Uh, we grapple, and we hang out, play video games, and, and play freaking... Uh, I hear Austin Hubbard's quite the gamer. He's on this card. He, again, I don't play the video games with them. I'll play like, uh, what is it called? A little s smack ball. What is that thing? Not hack, on the trampoline. Smash ball? Yeah, but Corey Sandhagen is a G at that. Spike ball. Corey Sandhagen is a G at that, so I've been working my ass off to try to beat him. You ever seen the people who do it with, like, fire? The ball that's on fire? Nah. Is that too extreme for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned yesterday Cerrone called you Homer Simpson, but... You also mentioned how you tightened your game up, and I think you lastly fight that's really shown. Do you think that's two fights? Yeah, that's two fights. Do you think eventually that criticism of the, all the home city things is going to go away? I want it to stick around as long as possible. I want these guys to think they're fighting a fool and a dummy. Um, you know, I have my timing is different. It will never, they will never be able to replicate it in a, in a gym. They will never be able to replicate the pressure that I'm going to put on them. They will never be able to replicate the heart rate that they're going to have to. Uh, contain when they fight me for, for as long as they last or I last. So those things I really rely on and it's really the output. My output has dropped about 85% if you look at it and it's really, um, my coach told me forever, you know, he said just try a little bit less and you will find more success and it just was, it's like golf, it's like the harder you try the worse you do. It doesn't make sense to me because my whole life in wrestling was the harder you work, you know, the, the better you did. But um, once I lost two times in a row. I was able to go back to the drawing board and really take the criticism and try to make adjustments. And uh, luckily, I have the 2018 Coach of the Year, um, the coach of the century. Um, so he's able. And I'm, I'm coachable. Wrestlers are coachable. I've been wrestling since I was four. So I listen to everything he says. Justin, over here, we've asked you about your legacy of four a lot. What does that mean to you? Is it, is it titles won, money made, opponents beaten? What does it mean to you? I mean, I think if you ask me at different times in my career, the answer will be different. Right now, it's to, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously I want to win the world title. That's what brings you notoriety as the best in the world. I'm not here. I'm going to, I'm going to leave and quit this when I don't believe I can be the best in the world um, or I don't have a chance. So that's, that's first and foremost what's going to create my legacy. But the way I represent myself, the way I treat people, um, the way the people from the UFC see me, the way the fans um, see me, the way that I get to interact with those people. Um, like I said, at any time in my career you ask me, the, my answer will be different. But it will always surround positivity. And that's, you know, because what we do is, is very brutal. It's, um, but, man, I know, how, I know how much happiness it brings people, even though it's violence, even though it's chaotic. 
I know um, how proud my parents are. I know how proud everybody that's ever met me in my life can be or will be whenever I've, you know, represent myself like I want to and win a world title. Sometimes in this business, it's hard to avoid negativity. I mean, we, we asked yesterday about the stuff going on with Conor McGregor. You had to reply to him. I don't think he's replied yet. I mean, are you kind of ready to have to get into a war of wars with him at some point? No, no, I wouldn't. I, would, I don't. So I picked five things. Preparation, um, attitude, you know, effort, nutrition, and then never let another man control my thoughts or emotions. And then, so the, a, war of world, a war of words will not happen. It's not even possible. You know, if, if he wants to speak truth, the truth, then I'm okay with that. Then I'll have that conversation. Do you think it is the truth when he tweets out, or do you think he's trying to get his name in the news cycle? I don't know. You tell me. Right. Does he really want to? Does he? I mean, of course, I'm sure he thinks he deserves a rematch in Moscow, but like, he who's gonna back, who's gonna get behind that? He mentioned you as a potential opponent. Were you aware of that? No, 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 no. I got Donald Cerrone. That's all I care about right now. And then the winner of Khabib and Tony. He's a retired man. He's not fighting no more. On to the winner of Khabib and Tony. I know you want to be the guy to test Khabib, and you think you're the best chance of beating him. But is there any interest <clears throat> in Tony Ferguson? Because I think when you talk about guys who put a pressure on, put a pace on, it's you and him. So just from a, yes. from a testing yourself point, is it I'm a fan of MMA, and I would love to watch that fight when it's over. <laughs> so is that is? Do you have a preference out of the two, or is it just? I want to fight the winner. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. This is your first time fighting outside the states, I believe. Um, was that by design or circumstance? Circumstance. Everything in my life is circumstance. I went to school for human services, social work. I didn't never. I was never in a street fight before I fought my first fight. I didn't step into a gym till after my fifth fight, till I almost got knocked out. I had no idea if I could fight, and I won 25 fights in a row. And I was fighting Eddie Alvarez on a pay per view. That's circumstance. Justin, I know you, you mentioned uh, the, the eye thing. You know, almost put this fight in jeopardy. But when it was coming together, was this timeline you know worked out for you? I think you it was said, perfect. You know, he won't take a fight. It was two. It was nine time. weeks. Um, you know, I would rather. I would have liked two extra weeks, but you know, I was in. I've learned to not let myself go uh, in between fights. You know, I won't, I'm getting older, and I've found that it does not get easier. So I'm doing the right things even when I'm not in camp. So that, like, eight-week deadline, there's some flexibility there? As long no, as I'm not going before eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, I'll fight. If I can go in there and get a knockout in one minute, then I'll fight in two weeks because I'm in shape and I'm already training and, you know, there's no break. I didn't take no damage. Um, my coach probably wouldn't like that because no matter what, you take damage in practice. In order to get ready for something that I'm about to to ensue, you have to put yourself through um, obstacles, adversity. You'd be a fool to go in there and think it's going to be daisies and rainbows because that's not what we're doing here. If I wanted to do that, I would have, you know, stuck with social work. You mentioned you know, you have five wars. Left. And that's not daisies and rainbows either. That's very, very tormenting on your emotions, but um, this is similar. Said you have five wars left in you. If you were to make a bet, is that number still at five when you leave, or is it four? No, I haven't had a war yet. Oh, who knows, dude? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't plan. I don't predict. I don't wish. I just go in there and I stand on hard work, and I stand on work ethic, and I stand on what I represent, and I stand on the fact that since I was four, I've been working every single day. I've never taken a shortcut. That's 26 years right now, and um, so I've been working harder than most of these guys for 20 years, uh, for 18 years. You know, they, a lot of these guys didn't do what I did before I came here. They weren't Division One All-American wrestlers. They didn't go through a Division One program. That alone will kill you. Justin, it seems like people keep underestimating Cerrone until he does what Cowboy Cerrone does. What is it about his game that people seem to overlook? I don't know. Those guys are fools, whoever is doing that. yeah. I'm, he's great, man. He's, he's so awesome. He, uh, you know, he, he knocks people out. He uh, gets finished if he doesn't knock people out. Uh, he, he's great at submissions. He's got a great ground game. And he's constantly putting pressure on you. Um, so, yeah, you underestimate him because he seems – he starts slow. You know, it's, people out there, people that are watching me through these cameras, they always want to criticize us because they have never stepped in our shoes. They would not be willing to step in my shoes or his shoes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, they want to be relevant and uh, they just have to say one word and they feel relevant and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm here to, to make people excited. I want people to hate me, I want people to love me. You need both to be successful and to be a superstar in this sport. That is ultimately my goal, to provide for my family, to give my parents opportunities uh, to let them retire early. My dad just retired. So, I mean, I know that, you know, he's not going to be making as much money as he used to. 
I would love to help him. He's helped me my whole life. He's gone in debt countless times, countless amount of money to, to get me to where I'm at right now. And uh, they've been at every single fight along the way. You were asked earlier if you would be satisfied if you had Cowboy's career at the end of the day. And you responded with, you know, you want to be the most exciting fighter of Bellies knockouts. If when all was said and done, you were the most exciting fighter, but you hadn't gotten a belt, would you feel like... Cowboy ain't got a belt either, so why would I trade with him? You know, that's, uh, you know, I'll trade with, uh, I wouldn't trade my life for anybody's life, to be honest with you. But just overall, would you be dissatisfied if you didn't have the belt at the end of the day, or does it matter well, as long as you're the most exciting? I will try my hardest, and I will be satisfied with that. I will not take a shortcut. Um, I won't stray from, I won't uh, run because I'm scared of it. You know, I'll face my fears consistently, constantly. Every single time that it's in front of me, I'm going to jump. And that's what I've trained myself to do. Justin, you've uh, never left a UFC card without a performance bonus, but I uh, got some stiff competition this time, lots of finishers. Do you think this streak might be in jeopardy? No, no. <laughs> Um, if I get finished early, I don't get one, but yeah, I'm the main event. It's the best chance to get a bonus. I'm five out of six for main, or it's my, this goes six, five out of six now after this fight for main events. Unheard of, you know. The guys that I faced, unheard of. You know, uh, I'm not going to fight Dennis Seaver and get a title shot, I'll tell you that. You and Trevor at the open workouts, having a lot of fun. I see you bantering back and forth, playing to the crowd. What is it like to have that sort of close bond with the it's everything, um, you know, uh, it's really who you, your, your life, again, circumstances, who am I going to surround myself with, um, a positive guy like that, coach of the year like that, you know, and then uh, the, the ability to always have respect and still get to have a friendship with him is, you know, every coach I've ever had, I've never been able to have, it's been hard to have that because you really got to, for one, I was a kid, you know, respect your elders, I always tried to do that, and so I couldn't even look at myself as on the same level as them as a friend or a person. They're always a, you know, a hero or, uh, you know, a role model. That's who they were, and uh, he, he's the same thing. But you know, we're closer in age, and so it's easier to, you know, we go snowboarding every Thursday during winter. We uh, we go camping, we you know shoot slingshots at moving targets in the gym. Uh, in between workouts, we play hacky sack for fun to warm up. Um, so yeah, it's it's cool. Are Makes life targets, a little easier. Are moving targets other fighters? Or? No, no, we had slingshots. <laughs> you throw foam, see who can hit it. Thank you.